Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is the truest tyrant to ever try. His name is Megatron, and this is the Death Machine. With these double-sided commanders, there's a lot of text, and it's easy to get confused about how exactly to build them. But in the case of Megatron, there's an easy solution. Imagine that you couldn't flip between sides. If you could only choose one side of Megatron to be your commander, which side should you build around? The front side, of course, which means we're only using the back side as a means to get on the front side for cheaper. On his back side, though, the side we'll be casting, Megatron is a 4-5 artifact that's only ever a creature on our turns. On attack, we can sacrifice an artifact to turn it into a removal spell and transform Megatron. But it's important to note that that's the only real reason we're playing these artifacts, is as a stepping stone to get to Megatron's front side. This is not an artifact deck. On his front side, the thing we're trying to get to, Megatron turns all the damage we've dealt out this turn into mana. That's a crazy ability, and that's the thing to focus on. So we'll want cards that can deal damage to each opponent efficiently, as well as something to do with all that mana. After all, the successful transformation here nets us at least 8 mana when we connect, but it's so easy to make that upwards of 30 mana. We'll also want to play artifacts with mana values between 2 and 5 to fling at enemy creatures. But like with Angelo, we can't let these artifacts go to waste. These need to be artifacts that net us some advantage by entering and going to the bin, not just whatever fodder we have lying around. Lastly, we'll note that it's easier to get Megatron transformed if we play him as early as possible, when all the other creatures on board will have the least toughness, so less damage is required to get through. To start with, this is not an artifact deck. The artifacts that we do play are here to get us to the front side of Megatron, while the real goal of the deck is to use the front side. So the slots we can use for these artifacts are few and far between, and the bar for what can go in them is high. We want artifacts that we can sacrifice for either damage, more sackable artifacts, or cards in hand. Triplicate Titan, Spina Vish Sa, and Suchi Cave Card are all pulling us in the wrong direction. Turning one artifact into another doesn't get us anywhere. We have to be using the mana from Megatron to make more impactful plays than this. Instead, we'll play Skitterbeam Battalion and Metalwork Colossus, but notably not Phyrexian Turniform. We don't have the mana to encore this until after combat, when it's no longer useful, so this is just another triplicate type. The Decepticons are cute, and most of them have abilities that do synergize with Megatron, but none of them really have the impact that we want out of this, so we'll be cutting them as well. Next, we are once again cutting Swords to Plowshares. It's a damage-based deck, and the life gain matters, alright? It's very efficient, but it's also counter to our whole strategy, and we have so many better options. So, what's our timeline? Turn 1, we can't do a lot besides the Soul Ring and Mana Fixing, which we really do care about, so we're running a very well-chosen mana base. Turn 2, we'll lay down some ramp. It's important to have ramped and fixed our colors on turn 2, because we want to play Megatron on turn 3. Turn 4 is when we start to crackle with power, not unlike the card, crackle with power. We'll play Brimstone Trebuchet, Solemn Simulacrum, or Lodestone Golem to set up an artifact to sacrifice for our next turn. We'll also play Stormfist Crusader, Scrap Trawler, and Clone Shell in this slot. A particular note is the Crusader, which can draw us into our deck and give us an extra 3 mana when we're ready to flip Megatron. Along a similar axis, we're also playing Twilight Prophet, Casting Flame Breather, and Creeping Bloodsucker to regularly churn out damage without spending more resources. But failing that, we can also play Earthquake, Rolling Earthquake, and Flame Rift to get to tee up more damage to prepare for Megatron's Reckoning. Another great inclusion here is an audience recommendation, Neheb the Eternal. Even though it's not an artifact, not a damage dealer, and not a mana outlet, this card provides a lot of redundancy if Megatron gets taken out. And the mana provided is colored, which matters for our haymakers, and is given in addition to Megatron's mana, but without the need to sacrifice to get it. Along the way, we'll draw cards with Light at the Stage, Stinging Study, and Feed the Infection, on the off chance that someone's playing Poison. We're also playing Excise the Imperfect, Generous Gift, and Contraband Livestock to remove enemy permanents, while also making sure Megatron has a good target to deal excess damage to. Other honorable mentions are Crackling Doom, Rakdos Charm, and Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, which we can use to keep Megatron and the Gear Hulk on board and leave our opponent's shields down when we're ready to crash in and close out the game. 
Captain will also run Blacksmith's skill, Rebeck, Architect of Ascension, and Apostle's Blessing to protect our commander and make sure he's around for the endgame. We'll start closing out the game by using Twin Inferno or Teamer Battle Rage to either make Megatron deal insane damage or copy the spell we pour his mana into. Then we'll play Crackle with Power, Finale of Glory, and Torment of Hailfire to show our opponents just how far beneath the Decepticon cause they are. We'll also play Decree of Justice, White Sun's Twilight, and a Damnable Pact optionally pointed at an opponent to close out the game. With the setup cost of an opponent needing to have a small enough creature on board, and us needing an artifact big enough to kill it, we'll never be reliably threatening to win before turn 6. But it does happen surprisingly often, just because so many people play small mana dorks and value pieces to block and deter early attacks, which plays right into our hands. One trick I'm particularly happy with is the ability to point this damage at your own creatures, but also when there's a token deck at the table, you can point Megatron's attack trigger at an enemy 1-1 while actually attacking a different player, making it really easy to get through. Today's deck is a very strong 8, and maybe one day we'll even be able to take it up to 9. If you like this video, the next decks I'll be looking at can be found here, in no particular order, so if you see something you like, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!